guys. Look at Luna. She just wants to hang out here while I'm filming. This is so cute. What a day. This, this is a sign today is gonna be a good day. Hey guys, it's Jess. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day so far. Welcome back to another episode of my photo series. Today we are talking all about how to shoot photos of yourself. Now, over the last several years of being a content creator, as well as someone who just likes to take photos, I have had to learn how to take photos of myself and actually have them look good. Sometimes I just don't wanna ask somebody, I feel awkward. Sometimes I'm by myself, I don't have anybody to shoot a photo of me. And then sometimes, I just want to take a photo of myself. I look good, I feel good, and I don't want to waste a cute outfit. So today I'm going to share all of my tips, tricks, secrets, and things that I have learned to shooting awesome photos of yourself by yourself. Today's video also features an awesome giveaway for two people to win my favorite camera backpack, the Brevity Jumper Backpack. This backpack is so amazing for carrying all of your gear and being out and about, and I'll talk about it more later and I'll go more into depth on both of the items in the giveaway. And in addition to the backpack, you also get to win a Moment Lens Starter Kit, and I'll talk about all of the rules and how to enter at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around for that. But in case you're just really excited and really eager to enter, the rules also will be down in the description box as well as the link on where to enter, but I definitely recommend sticking around to the end so you get to hear all of the info about it. And the last thing is, if you guys have not subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below to see more videos like this. And now, let's hop on into the video. All right. Let's talk about gear. So there are two routes that I go with when it comes to gear for shooting photos. There is the mobile photography route, which for me is the iPhone, and the DSLR route, which is a Canon 6D. The gear that I use for iPhone shoots kind of depends on if I'm shooting in my house or if I'm going out and about and venturing location scouting and shooting on location. So if I'm just shooting in my house, all I'll use is a fold-up tripod meant for your phone and a little remote. If I'm going out and about into the world, something smaller scale where I'm just shooting the one outfit, everything I need can fit into a fanny pack. I use this one here from Moment. This one is the perfect size to just toss all of my gear in. I can fit my tripod strapped onto the bottom, my iPhone that I swap the phone case to a Moment lens phone case, so I can just put a lens on if I wanna shoot with the lens. The lenses that I'll be shooting with, I bring along an 18 millimeter lens for wide shots and a 58 millimeter lens for more of a portrait style photo where you have a blurred background and a very nice sharp focus on the face. And of course, the most important thing to go along in that bag is the Bluetooth remote that I use for actually shooting the photos. You just click it every time you wanna shoot a photo and it acts as your proxy button clicking finger and you get to shoot photos and you don't have to run back and forth every time. You want quick and fast because you know when you shoot in public, kind of don't want anybody to notice you're shooting photos in public. So honestly, the quicker the better. If I'm traveling a little bit heavier that day, I will bring along one of my brevity backpacks. So I actually have quite a few for different occasions. Having a specific camera backpack for all of your things is so amazing because there's so many compartments to store everything. And for me, it's everything from accessories to props to extra outfits, sometimes bras, spandex, makeup, hairspray, whatever random things I'm bringing with me onto the shoot go in this backpack and it's so nice nice to have everything all encompassed into one spot. Now for DSLRs, the camera that I pretty much only ever shoot with and the lens that I pretty much only ever shoot with is the Canon 6D 16 to 35 millimeter lens. I also bring my Peak Design tripod, which is the most amazing tripod I have ever used. Folds up really small, it's very lightweight, it's compact, and I can strap it on the bottom of my backpack and it just it just stays there, it's out of the way. I don't have to worry about trying to finagle it. It also has a ball head, so I get to adjust things if I want it horizontal, if I want it vertical, and everything is so customizable on this tripod. It is so amazing. To carry everything, I always have one of my brevity backpacks, honestly, usually two, because sometimes, you know, you just, you need to carry extra things. Inside, at the bottom, there is a section specifically for cameras, and you can customize these little Velcro joint pieces to fit your camera body, whether it's big, whether it's little. I've taken this on several trips with me and I think it's customized for my vlogging camera. Oh, yep, it is. It actually has my vlogging camera in it right now. So at the bottom, I created a section for just my vlogging camera and then there's a section for my little microphone and at the top, I just have a purse because 
sometimes I, I don't want to be holding a purse and a backpack. I want my purse to go in the backpack. It also has a zipper on the side where you can just reach in and grab your camera really, really quickly. There's also so many pockets and compartments and zippers. There are all these little things to separate stuff. So if you're shooting with different like little pieces, for me, I use these for accessories. I always bring snacks with me on shoots because you never know when you're gonna get hungry or get low blood sugar. I also always bring water with me. There is a nice sturdy pocket on the side that actually fits a good sized reusable water bottle or tripod or whatever you want. Put that on the side and it's there and you can also strap it in so it's not gonna fall out. On the back right here, there's a little secret compartment that is nice and secure. So if you wanna keep maybe documents while you're traveling, when I was traveling, this is where I would put my passport when we were in the airport. There's also this little slip right here. You can just slip this over a carry-on bag and it just sits there and it doesn't fall over. Obviously, we're only catching feelings, not flights right now, but you know, when we go back to regular things, there is a specific laptop sleeve, which I love because it actually fits my laptop. The final, final thing I like about this is that it's cute. Most camera backpacks I've seen are not. I really wanted to go over all of the features because one, I wanna share why I love it so much and why it's such a good piece. And two, this is, this is the giveaway item and you get to pick whatever color you want. There's so many different colors, they're all so, so cute but I wanted to show you guys everything so you guys know exactly what you're winning and you guys can get excited for it. Then the last thing I bring on these shoots with my 6D is just my phone. I have this app, the Canon Connect app, and this, I mean, it essentially also works as my remote. It connects and you have the ability from a distance to control all of the settings to control when you shoot a photo, to control how many photos you shoot. You also get to use it as a live view remote. So you get to see what things look like, you get to figure out the composition, what you want the style to look like, what your pose is gonna look like, your facial expression. So that way you can get that all figured out before you shoot so you don't have to run back and forth and be like, oh, that didn't work. You can adjust as you go and you know exactly what you're going to shoot and what it's going to look like. These are all the things that I bring with me. Sometimes it's a lot of stuff, sometimes it's few things. It really depends on what I'm shooting. If it's somewhere a little bit more high traffic where I just wanna be really low key, grab my photo and go, I'll bring as little as possible. And then if it's somewhere where I know I'm gonna have more time to shoot a photo, up in Portland, <laughs> I went to a college on the weekend that had all of these beautiful beautiful fall leaves. This was last year and I shot all of these gorgeous photos by myself. I just, I was probably there for like two hours just putting my tripod in different spots, shooting amazing photos. And I had all the time in the world. So I brought like a whole backpack with all my things. Now, before we hop into the next section of non-tech gear that I used to shoot, I want to make it abundantly clear that you do not need to have all of these things to shoot awesome photos of yourself. Always remember, work with what you have, not what you don't have. Don't spend all of your time being like, oh, I wish I had this, oh, I could do this if I had this. If all you've got is just your phone, work with it. Phones take amazing photos. And there's always things that you can invest in to enhance shooting on your phone, like phone lenses. They're an investment, but they're so much more affordable than buying a whole camera. You don't need the latest and greatest, the biggest, the best. You can if you want, but you don't have to. Work with what you've got. Now let's talk non-tech gear that I always bring along on shoots. And let's throw it back a couple days to when I was shooting some photos up in Georgetown. In addition to all of the gear, I also bring along a couple other essentials that are so helpful to have when you're out and about shooting photos. Oftentimes when you're running around, you're shooting photos, you're being the photographer, the subject, you're changing in and out of different looks, your hair gets crazy. A hairbrush is going to help you out. And in addition to that, a can of hairspray. Hairspray for the same reason, it's gonna keep all of those flyaways down, it's gonna keep things in place and keep you from having crazy frizzy hair. I also always bring fashion tape because you never know when something's gonna happen and when you'll need to fashion tape something down. And of course, lots of accessories and props to play around with. These are some hair scarves and bandanas that I love to use to accessorize and step up an outfit. I also bring hair clips, sometimes different shoe options. If it's a bunch of different looks I'm shooting, of course, all of the clothes. And if it's a super extra day, sometimes I'll get some flowers or coffee or whatever other kind of props and bring those along for the shoot as well. Before we shoot, something super important to know is settings. So getting set up to actually be shooting the best you can and having the best quality of your photos. So let's start off by talking about shooting on your phone. So all of the references I'm using here are for iPhone because that's what I have, that's what I know. When you're shooting on iPhone, always, always, always shoot on live mode 
and burst if you can. Now shooting in burst when it comes to yourself can definitely be pretty tricky because sometimes if you are using a remote and you hold down the button, it won't go into a burst mode. It'll actually go into a video recording mode, which can also work. I know some people record videos of themselves and just do a bunch of different poses and then screenshot those. Personally for me, I don't like to do that because I find that oftentimes it lowers the quality. Sometimes the color profiles just get kind of weird and you can't actually color correct and do your edits in the same way. So the reason that it's so great to shoot on live mode, burst mode, or putting things on timer where it shoots in bursts of 10, because sometimes when you go to pose, you don't hit or get that right pose. Sometimes you blink, sometimes you sneeze, sometimes you move, sometimes you're still mid running back and you don't quite get there in time. With live photo though, it captures a few seconds before and a few seconds after it takes the photo. So you get almost like one of those Harry Potter moving photos of time. You get a moment of time captured. So what you can do is you can hop up into the edit section of that photo and you can scrub through the live area and pick a frame that works better for you. This works so great for me when I'm doing movement shots where I'm walking or maybe I just want a lot of movement. It's really hard to capture those poses when you're just shooting one photo. My one note with live mode that I know people are gonna comment about is yes, the quality is not always as good, but I find that if you have great lighting, the quality remains pretty much the same. To speak a little bit more on bursts, essentially bursts is where you hold down the button and it takes a series of photos for you as long as you're holding the button. So it can be as short as two photos. It can also be like 500 photos. The burst photo feature captures that series of consecutive photos. So everything is in the best quality as possible and it's just, boom, all in one. And you also don't really get that much motion blur. Whereas with live photo, you sometimes do get motion blur. lighting. So this isn't really a setting unless you're using artificial lights, but I think in most cases, most people aren't. So my trick to figuring out where the lighting is best is to put my phone on selfie mode. And I do this for whether I'm shooting just on my phone or with a camera just to figure out the best angle of light. And I'll put it on selfie mode and I will literally just spin in a circle and figure out where the lighting looks best. You wanna get into a position where the lighting is very evenly lighting you, where you don't have all these shadows and dark spots. When you're shooting against the light, it does a lot of weird grainy stuff, especially on phones. It really tries to auto correct the brightness and you end up with some muddy, gray, noisy shots that just like don't work and don't look good. But if you shoot towards the light where you're being lit by the light, that photo is going to turn out 10 times better. I promise you, if you're shooting with a DSLR or another digital camera that shoots in RAW, it's gonna be a lot more forgiving because with RAW photos, always shoot in RAW guys if you can. If you have a digital camera or a DSLR, it likely does shoot in RAW. And if you wanna learn more about that, you should go watch some camera videos. I am not the best person to explain it, but essentially raw photos captures the entire color profile and all of those details. So when you pop a raw photo into a photo editing app, let's say Lightroom, that's when I have. When you do edit these photos, you almost always can bring a good amount of the detail that you shoot. So all this to say, shooting with good lighting is absolutely essential, especially if you're shooting with your phone, you need to be aware of how you're shooting, what lighting you're using, what angles you're using. For actual camera settings, I am not the person to learn from. There are far more qualified and knowledgeable people about this. I would recommend my friends Chris Howe and Lizzie Pierce. They are so knowledgeable. Definitely go check out their videos. Peter McKinnon is amazing. Daniel Schiffer, I love. You can learn a lot of stuff from them. Go to them. Now, I think it's time we get into actually shooting, how I set up this gear and how I actually shoot the photos. So let's throw it back. When I was shooting up in Georgetown and it was very, very cold and rainy, my fingers were frozen afterwards. But it was worth it because I got great photos. Let's see how I did it and what I ended up with. First stop, finding a location. I was driving along on the side of the road. I found this place. I thought it looked cute. So I think I'm gonna set up right here. I think this will look really nice. I'm trying to decide if I want to try to have this sign in it because it could look really cute, but then it also could be overly ambitious. So I'm gonna just set up and see how things look. So I've got my phone tripod. I'm going to snap my phone into place. There we are. And I'm going to make it go vertical because I want a vertical photo today. I'm gonna to pop my little lens on. 
I'm gonna be using an 18 millimeter lens so I get a nice wide shot, which I think is gonna look really good for this location. All you do is you line this up and you twist, and there it is. Last thing you need is a little remote clicker. The last step, we're gonna go into our photo app. Where are you, photo app? And we're gonna swipe up and we're gonna click on the timer. I'm gonna put it to three seconds. When you're shooting with this little remote, you can just shoot photos, you know, click, click. But if you're doing that, oftentimes you're gonna have the remote in your hand. It's gonna be pretty visible. And we don't always want that for the photo. But if you put it on a three second timer, you can click this and you have just enough time to hide the timer and then get into your pose. I think I found the perfect shot. I think this is such a great use of the wide lens because it's, it's working perfectly with the rounded top of this and really making everything kind of pop. And I think the purple of my top is gonna look so good. So far, I'm really liking the photos. I like the angle. I think I need to center a little bit more and hide my white socks. I probably shouldn't have worn white socks with black shoes and black pants because they very much stand out. How are you coming along? These are looking pretty cute. Okay, I think I could stand a little bit closer. That one's kind of cool. I have a dumb facial expression though. That one, I'm fixing my pants. I think this would have been really cool if I was in a better location. So I'm gonna try to recreate this pose, but a little bit more centered right here. of shooting photos is truly just moving around and feeling stupid, but it always comes together. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we got one. There are some super cute ones in this little series. I wanted to show you guys what it looked like with the lens, without the lens, and then compared to the wide lens. So this is with the 18 millimeter moment lens. Here is what it looks like without the lens. So it crops in quite a bit. Now this is gonna be great for if you're in a tighter location and you really need to maximize your space and you really want a nice, like wide view. And then here it is with the built-in iPhone one. So this one gives you a super wide lens, like a super kind of almost fisheye look sometimes. And while this can work, sometimes with the iPhone built-in wide lens, it gives things a really weird look to them. Sometimes it has a really weird color profile. iPhones often do this thing where they auto correct color or contrast based on what it thinks it should do. It'll over brighten things. And I find that when I shoot things on the wide lens, it makes my skin look really synthesized. It kind of like over smooths things. And I just, I don't like that look. Sometimes it works, but sometimes you want just a really good quality wide angle lens photo. So I really like using this for those kind of situations where I really want a nice crispy photo. So next up on the same building, there's this railing and white wall that I think is really, really cute. So a little pro hack for changing in public when you have different outfits, you're doing different looks. The first one is to open two car doors. So one in the front and one in the back, it kind of acts as a little shield. And then to also just be extra secure. I always wear a black bodysuit and bike shorts underneath everything I shoot. So that way, when I'm changing, I still have something that I'm wearing. I'm not just standing there completely in my undergarments. I have you know, a suitable amount of clothes on that it's probably gonna not draw too much attention. It's pretty low key. And it makes it really easy to change because you can just slip things on and off. And you're not worried about trying to like hide everything or crouch down. And it's just really great if you're changing into multiple outfits and different looks. So I've swapped into this brightly colored sweater. I think this is gonna pop really nicely against the white background of that wall. I'm gonna keep on my black skinny jeans and I'm gonna swap it to Doc Martens to add a nice little juxtaposition. I think I'm gonna toss on these vibey sunglasses. Oh, I like that, that's cute. And I think I'll also just keep my hair down for this photo, I think it looks good. Oh, snap, that could have been so bad. I think I'm gonna shoot more of an angle, like right here, and use some of this greenery that's on the side. Oh shoot, I left my tripod in the car. Okay, maybe I can put you in this bush. This is either gonna go really well and work, or it's gonna go not so great and you guys are gonna end up in the bush. Oh, cool, okay, I think that works. Just don't go anywhere. 
<laughs> so as always, first step, I get my tripod into the spot. I figure out where the lighting is good. I'll pop my hand in front to get an idea of how things might look like the lighting or the coloring. The reason I like using this 58 millimeter lens instead of just the portrait mode, the portrait mode uses an AI where it kind of fakes the background. It figures out where the subject is and then it blurs out the background, which works really great sometimes. And then sometimes it doesn't. But if you're using a lens, you're actually taking a photo like you would with a camera with a lens. So it's giving you an actual depth of field versus a synthetic AI generated one, which again, works great sometimes, but you know, sometimes you want just like a really good crispy photo. swap back into the other lens. I think that would actually look quite cool. I think I got some awesome fo- Oop, probably should take this off first. Rule number one of having a camera on a tripod. Oop. Don't put it in a bush. <laughs> Stay. Rule number one of putting a camera on a tripod that I learned back when I was in digital video in high school. Never move a tripod with a camera and especially with a lens on it. Now I break this rule a lot, but today I'm not because <laughs> you guys are watching me, so I can't. <laughs> okay, let's head back to the car. We're gonna switch to my DSLR. And we're gonna end this video off with a bang. I'm super excited to shoot with this one. Okay, I've got my third and final outfit on and I was actually going to go find a new location for this last outfit in this last shot, but then the lights came on in the diner, so it closed at three, but for some reason the lights still come on. Doesn't seem like the best use of energy, but you know, not my restaurant. So I thought it would look really nice with the blurred background of the camera with the lights in the back. So I think I'm gonna actually just use this location again. And this is another tip I have for you guys. It's so awesome to find a location that has multiple different spots that you can shoot different photos at that you really can make the most out of that location so you're not going from spot to spot to spot. You can just go to angle to angle to angle. Now back to what I was doing. I was setting up my peak tripod for the camera. So I'm just pulling out all the legs right now. I'm trying to do this quick because it's starting to get dark and it's starting to mist more. And then I'm just gonna pop my camera on. I probably should have filmed this while this was still horizontal, but you know what? You work with what you got, not what you don't got. So now I'm gonna open the Canon Connect app, which is just the app that goes along with the Canon cameras. And I'm going to connect to this camera through Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna hop into the Wi-Fi function on this camera, connect it. And then from here, I can start using this as my remote. I think we are done shooting photos. I think I got some good ones. So let's head back home. We'll edit them and we'll see the final look. But now let's head back home because it's really cold. I can see my breath. I feel some sprinkling of rain. And that is a wrap on today's video. So I hope you guys enjoyed all of these tips and tricks. I hope you guys learned some good stuff because I tried to just put as much info in here as possible for the giveaway that I mentioned earlier. Just a quick rundown of everything and then I'll hop into the rules on how to enter. The giveaway is for two people to win 
one brevity jumper backpack. You also win a moment lens starter kit. So this comes with one phone case and a lens. And this is just going to step up your mobile photography so much. It is going to make sure you are always taking amazing photos. And as I showed you guys, like this is how I slayed those photos oh my goodness i'm still not over those diner pictures they are so so cute now to enter the giveaway it is super easy you're gonna head to the description box click on the link that says enter this giveaway and from there you just enter the giveaway for bonus entries you also can follow me on instagram as well as moment you have to follow us both to get that extra bonus there will be a spot to claim those bonus giveaway entries on the link down in the description box you'll be able to just scroll down and it'll be like bonus entries and after that you're all entered to win this giveaway is going to end on November 10th, so make sure you enter as soon as possible because I don't want you guys to miss out on this. It's for two people to win, so it's not just one person winning. There are two chances of winning this giveaway, so truly make sure you enter. Don't miss this opportunity because it is a good one. And if you guys wanna check out anything that I shared in this video, both random gear or stuff from Moment, links to everything will be down below in the description box, and anything from Moment will be under that landing page so you can shop everything all in one spot. Now moving on to today's quote of the day. Today's quote says, there is no right time. There's just time and what you choose to do with it. I love this quote because I think so often people wait and wait and wait. They wait for the time to be just perfect, just right. People wait to get the perfect clothes, the perfect setup, the perfect gear, the perfect this, the perfect that. There is not really a perfect in this world. And if you spend your whole life waiting for things to be perfect or waiting for things to be 100% ready, you're gonna be waiting for a long time. It's going to push that starting line further and further away. So if you are waiting to do something, if you're waiting for that quote unquote perfect time, this is your sign to dive right in, to just start. So that is today's quote of the day. That is today's challenge. Thank you again for watching. I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys. Thank you.